Welcome to Curiosity Capsules, an interview series exploring how scientific curiosity serves as an engine for developments in science and engineering, and showcasing the importance of inquisitiveness in research. For today's capsule, we are honored to be joined by Dr. Sara Nunez de Vasconcelos, a scientist in the Division of Experimental Therapeutics at the University Health Network and an associate professor at the Institute of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Toronto. The focus of Dr. Nunez de Vasconcelos' research program is the generation of alternative therapeutic avenues to treat cardiovascular diseases. Dr. Nunez de Vasconcelos, thank you so much for joining us for today's Curiosity Capsule. Thank you so much for having me, Ana. This is really a pleasure. Dr. Nunez de Vasconcelos, as one of Canada's leading researchers in cardiovascular development and regeneration, your work has had a transformative impact on the research landscape in regenerative medicine. What are some of your roles and responsibilities as a scientist at the Toronto General Hospital Research Institute? So there are many things that we do, right? So from uh, mentoring students, um, uh, which is one of the things that I like the most, um, all the way to you know doing exciting research that it, it, for me is geared towards uh, regenerative medicine. Um, um, we also have to do a lot with um, committees, so serving in different committees uh, that um, basically relate to all sorts of different things. There's animals and, and you know, you name it, right? Um, reviewing grants. So um, the list of what we do is pretty, pretty long. Can you tell us about your Eureka moment, a moment during your research where you experienced a sudden triumphant discovery? You know, it's funny, those Eureka moments. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I think I would, not, I would need a little bit of time to think about that, but what I can say is, you know, it's usually pretty exciting to go back to the lab. So at this stage, I'm not in the lab as much, right? So, um, and, I, and I really miss it. So every time we go back in and we see beating cardiomyocytes under the microscope, that's always exciting, right? It never gets old. Um, so it, it, it's fun because usually cell culture is pretty, you know, standard as you look at the cells they're attached they've grown not grown but the cardiomyocytes right they you know they beat and you can see you can see them bending posts we can look at the, you know how different treatments affect that so that is always always exciting so i guess that it's not a eureka moment but it's certainly a highlight of um, the work that we do I understand that you are the driving force behind the development of the BioWire, a novel innovative platform for the maturation of human pluripotent stem cell derived cardiomyocytes, which we were just discussing. Published in Nature Methods, your paper has been cited over 700 times. Can you elaborate on the intricacies and impacts of this groundbreaking project? So this was a very fun project to uh, be uh, working on. Um, it was like my... Um, I did one, one and a half years as postdoc and, and I was driving that, that work. And, um, you know, we really kind of had this idea that if we work the cells out, like you work at the gym, right? And, and you pace them and you make them work out, uh, it would make a difference. And, and indeed it does, right? It, it, you promote somewhat the maturation of the cardiomyocytes. And, and that was really nice to see. Um, after that, that's a lot of different um, groups have uh, contributed to that field in terms of you know, investigating different cues that contribute to the maturation of these, uh, these cells. Um, it's important to mention that you know, most of the progeny of uh, human pluripotent stem cells is pretty immature. doesn't matter if it's cardiomyocytes or endothelial cells, they're not like the adult, right? So finding a way to make them more similar to human adult cells is, is really important because they may respond to different stimulus uh, in a different way than the adult cells would, right? So um, that's kind of how the work started. And from there, we've uh, used um, these, you know, micro tissues um, on chip to really develop disease models, probe what different drugs would do. Um, so it's been a, a very rewarding area of research for sure. 
Uh, your interdisciplinary research combines stem cells, tissue engineering, microvascular regeneration and biology, organ regeneration and organs on chip technology. Can you tell us about the ultimate goal of your research? So what we would love to have happen is to be able to push and develop new treatments uh, that would be used in the clinic, right? Um, and that's why a, a very big focus on the research is not just related to, you know, the tissues and potential drug treatments that could come out of it, but also on true uh, tissue regeneration. So we combine really our bioengineering skills, um, um, background in vascular biology, um, and, and different aspects of uh, the cardiomyocytes and the tissues to really try to uh, answer some of the big questions in the field. Like if you really want to create large volumes of tissue uh, and regenerate them, um, what are the barriers? And, and one of the biggest ones is it's vascularization, right? It's really hard to generate big tissues if you can't vascularize them because, you know, there's oxygen diffusion problems. Um, you have to send nutrients to the cells and remove waste. So how do you do that? The blood vessels do, do that. So that's one of the biggest challenges uh, that we are uh, trying to address in the lab. And hopefully as we progress, um, we'll get to see some of those reach the clinic. Speaking of challenges, in your opinion, what are some of the greatest barriers and limitations of scientific research and how can we overcome them? Oh, in scientific research in general or my area or, you know, as a scientist? Um, I guess as, in your experience as a scientist and um, how you've interacted with the scientific field, um, how, what kinds of challenges have you had to overcome? So, um, you know, so basically in our, in, in my area in regenerative medicine, I find that, you know, really uh, vascularization is one of the biggest issues um, and then creating this large volume 3D tissues that are, um, that could really mean something once you put them in vivo, right? It's not just a few cells, it's something that would really, really be a game changer. Um, as, a, as a researcher, uh, I mean, the pandemic was uh, insane, so it has kind of brought out and um, really, you know, brought to surface some of the issues that we already faced before, but it got um, much, much worse during the pandemic, right? So um, particularly in the case of women in science, you know, having to deal with school closures and being a primary caregiver and having a flexible job that always gets you the kid, right? So school closes, oh, you have to watch the kid. Or, uh, you know, um, even when you have a, a, a partner that's completely committed, right? It's just, those are the limitations. And, um, and you can see this from the statistics, right? Like how um, a lot less women have submitted papers, uh, during the pandemic and, and et cetera. So, you know, uh, getting some of that um, balance, you know, and, and that, that I think it's a big issue in the field in general, across the board, no matter really which area you work on, um, ha having more equity uh, when it comes to those, the, those things, it's really important. And then trying to get um, accommodations, not necessarily accommodation, but more friendly uh, work environments that allow different types of productivity or, um, you know, would help different people deal with their limitations. It's really, really important. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, finally, what is your vision for the future of tissue engineering and cardiovascular regeneration in Canada and beyond? So I think Canada is extremely well poised, poised to um, uh, really contribute in a meaningful way to uh, tissue engineering and, and, and regeneration in general, right? We have uh, the legacy of, of stem cells that we've been, um, uh, I guess, doing a great job of uh, continuing. And um, um, I think. Um, it's it's a bright future, you know. We need more support. We need more 
funding, particularly for, um, you know, project grants within CHR instead of those boutique type of uh, funding schemes, right, that are usually so tailored and so limiting. Um, <clears throat> but I think, you know, uh, we, we are already doing our part and um, it, it, I can see a bright future. Thank you so much for joining us today. On behalf of our director, Dr. Emilio Alarcon, and the whole Beats Research Radio team, we thank you all for tuning in. Beats Radio is supported by the University of Ottawa Heart Institute, the Beats Laboratory, and the Department of Biochemistry, Microbiology, and Immunology at the University of Ottawa. Don't forget to follow our Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube platforms to stay in the loop of our latest uploads. 